the Pastel Society of Southern California was founded in July 2009 by three pastel enthusiasts. And we had just returned from an international pastel society meeting in Albuquerque, and we were so excited about this medium. It's a luscious, vibrant medium to paint in. And so we decided we need a pastel society here in Southern California. There isn't one. So we set about to um, write up a business plan, and we became a nonprofit shortly after that. And so we have grown from three of us to more than 130 members today. And what we do is we share the love of pastel, the medium. And it's a very old medium. Degas used to paint ballerinas. You probably know Ed Edward Degas. And it's archival, and it's just pure pigment in a stick. So we created a mission. We wanted to do three things. We wanted to educate the public about the medium of pastel. We also wanted to bring together pastel artists for collaboration and camaraderie. So we have meetings and things where we have instruction and we all get together and we share and critique and everything. And the third thing was to really inspire excellence in the medium. So we bring in workshop instructors that are inter internationally known to teach us. And if you look at this show right now, this is our eighth annual Pastel Society of Southern California members exhibition, you'll see different techniques all the way from realism, to impressionism, to you know, just very painterly and abstract pieces. Well, I have a wave painting that's called All the Wave from Catalina, because I was standing out on the cliffs and I did a plein air wave. Plein air means just painting from life, so you're standing there with your easel, and I had to study the waves as they crashed over and over again. It wasn't from a picture that you then took to the studio? This one was from a photograph, but the wave was just from studying from life and then trying to recreate from my memory a little bit of the wave. I could do Catalina, I could see it, and try to get the atmosphere, but the wave itself, I had to sort of freeze in my brain and paint it. Wow, so that's, that's yeah. yeah, that means a lot when you look at it now. And you've got one other one over here. The other one is a mare and a foal from San Luis Obispo. It's actually from the Cal Poly um, breeding farm. So I photographed a mare. It's kind of hard to draw horses from life, although I have done that. It's easier if you take a photograph and then try to recreate kind of the feeling of being outside in the atmosphere. So I sort of made up some of the background because there were fences and I took them out and put purple flowers. Uh, yeah, a little artistic license, right? Of course. That's why painting is always, um, should be better than a photograph because you can make it your own. We're at the Lexus Service Center on Crenshaw Boulevard and we are so fortunate as an art community to have this service center that allows us to show large shows like this uh, here on the walls of the service center so people can enjoy it while they're getting their car serviced. Um, we're just very grateful to the to Lexus because there are very few venues in the South Bay that, we, that will hold uh, as many paintings as we have here. What does it take to get a painting on a wall here? Uh, in the Pastel Society of Southern California, we want to really encourage everyone to uh, excel in their artwork and to take the next step. So we have categories all the way from novice to a gold category, which is a professional level. Um, and so we encourage everyone in the membership to put one painting, at least one painting, in. And then we do have a jurying process. Um, in the past, three members of our own organization were the jury, but now we've hired a nationally known uh, pastel instructor to be the, the juror this, this year. And he looked at all the entries and chose at least one painting from every artist that is up, up here on the wall. And what got you into pastel? What, what made you go that direction from oil, water? Well, actually, previously I was a colored pencil artist and um, made it to the national level of the uh, Colored Pencil Society of America. But, pa but pen colored pencil is so tedious. You're working with very fine points and it takes a long time to make a painting. And when I first got a piece of pastel in my hand and uh, made that stroke across the page. I was just enchanted with the fact that it's beautiful, pure pigment, but also that it's um, a much more quick medium, and you can fill the page very quickly using the side of the pastel stick. And so I am just really enjoyed pastel ever since. I decided that everybody has a passion. They don't know what it is, but they have it. And I discovered that mine was art. And so it was kind of fun. I took a drawing lesson here in Torrance, an adult school, and did a lot of drawings. And 
then one day, one of the people came in and they had painted their drawing and I thought, what a concept, <laughs> that's really good. And so I decided that's what I wanted to do. The Pastel Society has workshops and every time we have a, one of our meetings every other month, we have someone demonstrate and then have a mini meeting after, you know, and we all draw. And it's been fun, it's pure pigment. It is wonderful to work with. Not like watercolor, you know, which you, you have to put on something first and then something second and you can't make a change. This you can change. <laughs> and it's very exciting. It's, it's a neat way to do art. My husband just died and this is from one of his photographs. And these are the mustard fields down at Del Cerro. This is, this is a local picture and that's, this is Eagle's Nest. And he just loved to take photographs and I am attempting my tree picture that you saw is another of his photographs. So I'm trying to paint what he did. I retired from the Daily Breeze where I was a journalist for 27 years uh, in 2007 and I decided I'd reinvent myself as an artist. So that was a big leap because, you know, I haven't really done much in the way of art. I'd always been writing. And so I'd always been kind of an auditory learner and not a visual sort of person. And uh, my first class I took from Suzanne Kuskami, who it was a botanical um, drawing and, and painting class. And I had been um, writing, among my other things as a features writer, I'd done uh, the garden column for 25 years, and so I was into plants, and we have many of them at home. So this was really a nice, easy, gentle way to get into it. And uh, then I went from there to uh, the Pastel Society, which was just absolutely opened up a whole new world because being a crass amateur that I was, I was there with all these really excellent, excellent artists and intermediate artists and some other beginners too. So I felt super comfortable and it's just a wonderful society. And they have workshops and demonstrations and excellent, excellent teachers. And I've just been, now I'm sort of torn between my watercolor classes. I'm now taking an El Segundo from um, Debbie uh, Abshire and also taking all these classes through the Pastel Society. So it's been a lot of fun. Well, I'm uh, on the board and I'm in charge of uh, promoting the show, this public show, which happens once a year. And part of it is my contacting nationally known and local uh, companies that have materials that pastel artists use, whether it's papers or sprays, pastels, etc., etc. And um, so we write to them and um, we usually get a very good response because this is a growing society. Um, and um, the, the other part of, of the promotion is promoting the actual exhibition. And that means uh, contacting local papers and um, TV people and getting them to come along and um, in good time. And then obviously, you know, we, we kind of have people to talk and uh, be interviewed. And also, we, um, we want to make sure that people other than the artists and their friends know about it. We're really trying to reach other people here in Torrance, um, because this is the biggest uh, display of pastels you're going to see uh, per year. Um, and so that, that's, that's why it's important to tell people about it. So let's talk about your painting behind you. It is called Sierra Winter, but uh, is this in the Sierras? Where is it? Uh, this, yes, it's called Sierra Winter, and it's actually in the Owens Valley near Bishop. And so I, I did this last New Year's, at least I got the idea last New Year's Eve, coming back from Mammoth to LA for a New Year's Eve party, and I was in the back seat, I wasn't driving, so I couldn't really control the situation. Yeah. But, I, but there was, it was absolutely wonderful. The whole valley was, was dusted with snow and ice. And um, I saw this scene coming up. And as you see, there's these uh, uh, clouds everywhere. And, the, and there's the wind is blowing and the light falling. And there's a big patch of this flatland here lit up. And there's a little building down here, a little farmhouse. Uh, there was, the, the, the actual scene was, was quite different, but I had to manipulate it. And um, was this based off of plain air, the moment you drove by, uh, or a picture, it's more, or it's more like I need to get a photograph of that. I used an acrylic medium, clear acrylic medium, to get this going, and it, it leaves. It first of all, it dries very fast, so the pastel is frozen in the acrylic medium, and then I work on top of it. Oh. So I work in layers because you can you can um, you can spray the pastels with a fixative, and then you can work on top of it. 
Um, so do you start dark or light in your situation here? Did you start with darker uh, stuff? I like dark with a mid-tone. I like to work on a gray. That puts you in the middle of the value scale. And so you go brighter, darker. And I try to uh, establish um, um, uh, uh, any, any network of color will have a warm and a cool of each color. The main ones being obviously red, yellow, blue, followed by the, the um, complementaries. And so you have a warm and a cool of each one. And that mimics how our world is lit by the sun, which is very warm and bright. And then where the shadows are, that's uh, lit by the blue sky or, or cloudy sky even. So there's always a warm and a cool for everything. And by sticking to that principle, I use essentially the rainbow. And I use a variety of pastels. And I try to use, a, this is a warm area here, and this is a, a cooler area here. So always with an interplay of warm and cool, you'll always have something interesting happening. At the same time, trying to maintain a harmony of some sort. It's, it's very important to, to, to paint outside. And so many people in the South Bay are, are doing plainer painting uh, to, to, to capture that. And the cliffs around here are just magnificent. You have to go a long way to find cliffs and interesting, you know, uh, seascapes like that and involved with beaches. You've got to go down to Laguna or north of Malibu.